Texas has a reputation for strange wild hogs. We have feral hogs. We have documented populations of African warthogs. And now someone sent me this. When they sent it, they asked, what is this? And I showed a few hog hunting friends of mine, and one of them said it looks like a polar bear hog. This wasn't a trick of light or a manipulated image. It was captured on a game camera sent to me by a reader from up near Tyler, Texas. And what you're looking at is definitely a hog. After my work on warthogs in Texas, I started getting messages like this with people asking if I'd ever seen anything similar. Once you start reacting to how strange it looks, start breaking down the body shape, the coat, and the proportions, a very specific possibility of the identity starts to emerge. This doesn't resemble a typical wild boar or feral hog most people are used to seeing. Instead, it closely resembles a type of domestic hog that's also feral in Europe, known for wool-like fur, heavy build, and traits that are not typically found in feral hogs. So once you understand that, the image starts to make sense. One possible explanation is an old domestic breed resurfacing specifically from a woolly breed of hog known as the Mongolicia. The Mongolicia is a Hungarian hog breed developed centuries ago for fat production and cold tolerance. It's known for its thick, curly, wool-like coat and unusually heavy, blocky build. Traits look very different from what most people expect a wild hog to look like. That doesn't mean this animal is a Mongolicia, but its traits certainly appear here. When domestic pigs go feral and mix with hog populations, Rare characteristics can reemerge even generations later. Feral hogs in the South are genetic mosaics shaped by escaped livestock, uh, wild boar releases, and decades of uncontrolled breeding. When those genetics reshuffle, animals like this can appear. Another possibility is this is just a straight up escaped Mongolicia that entered a population. I talked to Dr. Jack Mayer, one of the world's top hog experts, and he said it takes only a couple of weeks for a domestic hog to go completely wild. Now, this breed certainly has large ears, but the animal in the photo seems to basically have a little stub of an ear and an ear hole. My opinion on this is that this hog has been dealt with by hog dogs before. Often catch dogs, which might be anything from a a Dogo Argentino to a pit bull to a black mouth cur will grab the hog by the ear. And it looks like this guy might have had some ear damage from encounter with hog dogs. Not 100% on that, but it's certainly a possibility. And this reveals a larger pattern. I've been getting lots of reports of gigantic white hogs all throughout the South. Now, we think of the typical feral hog being black or maybe brown, but you have reddish coated ones, blonde ones spotted ones, and you also have white ones showing the genetic lineage. Most of the white ones out there are not albinos. They are just simply white. And there have been some really incredible encounters over the years. For example, I interviewed a young man who was camping up in an area in Louisiana off of a major river system. And he was camping on an island, a very large island in this river. And he had one of those little tents, kind of like a safari tent where his head's actually just hanging out the outside the tent. He's just laying there, it's kind of a lean to. And he wakes up and hears a noise. And there is a hog that he estimated to be between six and 700 pounds staring at him. And he thought, oh my God, I'm dead. It had a big tusk and everything. He moved and fortunately the pig just kind of walked away and went down toward uh, the river. And this was in an area where I had actually found on the Texas side of the river in the same general area, the largest hog tracks I've ever seen in my entire life. We're talking massive, gigantic hog track. And I've been getting photos of people sending me really light colored white boars that are extra large throughout the area. And one of them even kind of resembles at a distance a Mongolicia. And you'll see things like this pop up every now and then. There is a hog called a mule-footed hog. It's a domestic hog that has, instead of a cloven hoof, like a mule hoof. And they'll pop up in the population. And these genes just kind of resurface and you get really, really strange things. And one of the things that I have noticed over the years is there have been really massive, massive, massive hogs that are white. Most of the giant hog reports you get are typical 
you know, the black colored hog, but there are some that are like Buick size that are white. And I think that goes back to some of the domestic breeds that were common in the South. I'm doing research now on the Louisiana and Texas sides of the Sabine River into these gigantic white hogs and also now looking for more of these that have the Mongolia genetic. What is going on out there? What are people seeing? People want to know, and that's why you should tune into this channel. What are we seeing out there? And there's some strange stuff and it's not always in a wildlife field guide. Now, there have been legends of these gigantic hogs for many years. And there have been now, of course, we got game camera photos of different kinds of things going on. They're just huge pigs. But I'm seeing an emergence again of really big white ones. And I find that fascinating. And so I'm kind of launching what I'm calling the search for Moby Boar. It's kind of like my version, my redneck version of a white whale, right? I'm looking for Moby Boar, these gigantic white pigs that are out there and getting pretty good response from people in different areas. I mean, I'm, I'm putting the information out all over to gather reports, but my in the field stuff is going to be pretty close to home on the Louisiana and on the Texas sides of the Sabine River. And I'm excited to see what I might find. And I'm hoping the gentleman who got this awesome, strange, Mongolia looking hog gets more photos of that and send it over. Maybe they catch the hog or maybe they kill the hog. You know, uh, who knows? But it'd be interesting to look at that thing a lot closer because I think that is truly interesting. This weird polar bear looking hog that's running around out there. And you never know what kind of hog you're going to see. On two occasions, I have seen feral potbelly pigs uh, found a group of probably, you know, 15 or 20 on the side of the road in this area about, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago, early in my research. And then uh, two years ago, outside of Baytown, actually behind Bucky's, there was a potbelly pig running around out there in the pastures. And what was interesting in this one Newton County group, you started seeing feral hogs a few years later developing a pot belly look they're obviously interbreeding and i bring this up to show that when you interject these different domestic breeds into the typical feral hog mix you never know what's going to come out but you certainly get the genetic potential for massive 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 hogs i don't think most of these are albinos that i'm actually looking for that too are there real albino giant hogs out there? I think most of them are just white, even leucism where you have like the regular colored eyes and then just a lack of pigment along the skin. True albinos would have a much harder time surviving out there. And uh, especially in Texas and Louisiana with the crazy heat and everything we got going on, all the predators and things that are running around. But it's a fascinating topic. Strange polar bear looking hogs, gigantic white boars, albinos, all kind of cool stuff going out there. And I tell you right now, the feral hog issue is only going to get more interesting because... We're seeing a lot more things pop up in the population thanks to game camera technology. And now we're seeing that it's not just one particular kind of pig, it's many. And some of them get huge. If you like the mysterious and inspiring side of nature, even sometimes the dark side, subscribe to this channel, Chester Moore, wildlife journalist and investigator, and we'll keep pressing into the wild to see what we find.